Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are discussing about stool examination. The indications of stool examinations are diarrhea, dysentery, conditions with gastrointestinal infection, malabsorption syndromes, inflammatory bowel disease. The tests include gross examination, microscopic examination, chemical examination, immunological examination and microbiological examination. The gross examination includes color, consistency, quantity, shape, order and mucus. Microscopical examination is done to identify leukocytes and parasites. Other examinations includes occult blood test, test for fat and sugar identification, pH of stool and other biochemical examinations like testing for pancreatic enzyme alpha-1 antitrypsin calprotectin and to find out infectious causes of diarrhea or dysentery. It is examined for bacteria, virus and parasites. Now let's learn the sample collection. Sample should be collected in clean, dry, leak-proof container and it should not be contaminated with water or urine. Do not fill the container full till the cap. If the stool is liquid, 5 to 6 ml of liquid stool is enough for examination. Sample should immediately within 30 minutes reach to lab for examination. The patient should avoid red meat for 3 days and should not Take aspirin or NSAIDs such as ibuprofen for 7 days prior to the test. Vitamin C more than 250 mg a day from supplements or citrus fruits or citrus juices should be avoided for 3 to 7 days before testing because it can affect the chemicals in the test and make the result negative even if the blood is present. If stool is required to store, then should be stored with preservative or in a refrigerator. Three consecutive stool sample examination is ideal. Now let's learn the macroscopic examination. Presence of copious mucus and blood is always abnormal. The normal color of stool is tawny due to presence of bilirubin and bile. In infants, stool may be green and its consistency may be watery or pasty. Clay colored stool or putty colored stool is observed in biliary obstruction. If more than 100 ml blood is lost from upper gastrointestinal system, black terry colored stool is observed. Beside bleeding, the black color stool may also be observed due to iron or bismuth treatment. A red color stool is observed in lower gastrointestinal tract bleeding. Now let's learn about microscopic examination. Microscopic examination is a diagnostic tool for defining protozoa, helminth and fecal leukocyte. Erythrocytes and leukocytes are not observed in normal stools. In order to see leukocyte, examination should be performed in stool samples obtained from area with mucus. Leukocytes are generally observed in bacterial infections and they are not observed in diarrhea caused by viruses and parasites. For moving organism, fresh stool can be examined immediately. A routine methods are wet mount preparation and iodine preparation for microscopic examination of stool. Now let's learn this wet mount and iodine preparation. First take a slide, put one drop of NS on the one side and put one drop of iodine on the other side and add stool sample with a wooden stick on each of the NS and iodine circle. Mix it properly and place the cover slip and observe under the microscope. Now let's learn the occult blood. 
Typically, occult blood is a passed in such a small amount that it can be detected only through the chemicals used in a fecal occult blood test. In peroxidase-based test, peroxidase like activity of hematin and or hemoglobin catalyzes the reaction of hydrogen peroxide and O dianisidine to form blue color. A loss of about 2 to 5 ml blood daily is normal in intestine. A hemorrhage above this limit can be detected in heme occult test. Let's learn the procedure of occult blood test. First, take the slide, place a filter paper on it and from the wooden stick, take the stool sample on the filter paper. Now add the powder that is provided by the kit and add H2O2 and observe for reaction. If the blue color is observed after 2 to 3 minutes then we can say that the test is positive and occult blood is present in the stool. Let's see the detection of fat in stool. In healthy humans, the daily excretion of fat in stool is less than 6 gram and this amount remains constant even if the daily fat consumption is 100 to 125 gram. The excretion of fat in stool may moderately increase in absence of fat malabsorption in patients with diarrhea. The gold standard in diagnosis of steatoria is quantitative calculation of stool fat from 72 hour collection of stool sample. The qualitative test including the Sudan 3 stain continue to be used in clinical practice because the collection of stool for 72 hours is difficult. Other method for detection of fat in stool is near infrared reflectance analysis NIRA. This analysis enables simultaneous measurement of fat, nitrogen and carbohydrate in a single fecal sample. It is a simple, rapid and reliable method in the measurement of steatoria. Other tests include fecal pH, electrolyte and reducing substance testing. After a fresh and watery fecal sample is homogenized and centrifuge and pH and electrolyte intensities are measured in the watery part of feces. The fecal pH is measured in a fecal sample using nitrazine paper. Normally the fecal pH ranges between 7 to 7.5. If a carbohydrate malabsorption is suspected, a reducing substance should be investigated in a stool using Benedict's or failing test. Uh, glucose, lactose and fructose are reducing sugars and sucrose is a not reducing sugar. A Benedict solution is mixed with an equal amount of stool in a test tube and heated. After heating, green, brown, yellow and red color indicates the presence of reducing sugar in the stool. Now let's learn about other tests. First is fecal alpha-1 antitrypsin test. Alpha-1 antitrypsin is a glycoprotein synthesized in the liver and the main component of alpha-1 globulins. An increase in alpha-1 antitrypsin clearance suggests that enteral protein loss is increased. The other tests are indirect pancreatic function test and they are fecal elastase 1 test. The measurement of fecal elastase 1 shows close correlation with pancreatic output of pancreatic enzymes including elastase 1, amylase, lipase and trypsin. A fecal elastase 1 level of less than 200 microgram per gram is considered abnormal. Fecal chymotrypsin test. Fecal chymotrypsin is an enzymatic product of pancreatic secretion that can be used to detect pancreatic insufficiency. Fecal calprotectin. A calprotectin is a cytosolic protein that has immunomodulator, antimicrobial and antiproliferative effects. The intensity of calprotectin increases in infection, inflammation and malignancy. 
it is zinc and calcium binding protein that is generally released by neutrophils and monocyte in intestinal inflammation the levels of fecal cal protecting increases therefore it may be useful to differentiate inflammatory causes of chronic diarrhea from non inflammatory causes fecal cal protecting increases in the inflammatory bowel diseases few fecal antigen tests and they are h pylori stool antigen test the detection of h pylori antigen in stool indicate an ongoing infection therefore a stool antigen test may be useful for the making the diagnosis of h pylori infection and for confirming eradication other fecal antigen test are rotavirus and adenovirus stool antigen test giardia stool antigen test antamoeba stool antigen test clostridium difficile toxin test in the stool the next test are multiplex molecular panel method is pcr it enables the detection of numerous pathogens more than 20 bacteria viruses and parasites in a short period of time and last is a stool culture this is in short about stool examination and this is the references for this video hope you like it thank you see you in the next video bye